So according to a report by Pew Research Center, 34% of the millennials have an existing debt. That means that 66% of people or millennials are debt free. Say what? Which means that more than half of this population are either not studying or they have very rich parents, which is obviously not the case. So that means that a lot of these millennials have a secret sauce, a method for paying down school debt very quickly. I see, I see. That's right. The report also found out that the average American owes $37,000 in student debt. And that includes this 66% of people who are debt free. That effectively means that the 34% of people that have an existing debt owe significantly more than $37,000 and that is scary. So welcome to my channel, my name is Gerald and today I'm going to share with you secret tips, if not hacks if you like to call it, of how you can pay off your student debt and how I'm actually paying my student debt and I'm going to go into a lot of unconventional lesser known techniques so stay tuned it's gonna be worth your time and let's begin and if you're new to this channel do me a big favor and hit that subscribe button because i'm just trying to make a living so first off let's start with the basic money management principles because if we can't do the basics of managing our own money then none of these techniques would actually work so it is very imperative you need to have that discipline if not find ways to build that basic discipline and apply the basic uh, financial money management techniques. I'm just going to cover each of this point relatively briefly. If you want more details, leave them down in the comment section below. Or ask me any questions you like because I think a lot of YouTubers already present or share information about uh, basic money management uh, techniques. All right. So the first most, most, most important thing is to be able to save a hell lot of money. If you're unable to save any money at all, then you practically have no way to pay off your student debt at all right so very important you need to save enough money or make more money and i've covered that relative in a lot more detail in another video so do check it out over here after this video and the second most important thing is to choose the best possible loan that you can find why because a small change in percentage points or terms over a long period of time could lead to a lot more fees and pain and suffering that you're going to have to go through so read the terms of the loan very 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 carefully so do check out uh, youtube uh, or other youtubers or google search basically a lot of other people would have uh, shared what are their experiences in your country of what are the best possible loans as a general rule of thumb the government usually provides better loans better terms lower interest rates compared to the banks an example of a better term could be interest-free loan throughout the years that you are studying so once you graduate only then you are charged like an interest rate on the month or day by day basis and the reason being is because the government considers education as a form of a good debt and they want to encourage more people to kind of study so most of the time not always they offer attractive packages or loans to help students pay off their school debt a little bit better. So the next tip is to set up the auto debit or in our case, Singapore's case, set up a gyro to automatically pay the installments of the debt. Reason being is that you don't want to end up or risk missing a payment because that's going to affect your credit rating and that's really terrible if you, if you want to buy a house down the line and not to mention you won't have the risk of missing a payment and incurring late payment charges. Plus, it gives you a peace of mind. So that's worth something too, right? And the next basic tip is to pay off your highest interest rate debt first and then slowly work your way down to the rest of the debt. Reason being, you're saving a lot more money, but there is another very popular method called the snowball method. So do check that out. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail into, into that. So moving on to the serious hacks, the real tips. All right. Whew. Looks like we've gotten the basics out of the way. So now let's talk about some of the more serious the bigger hacks, the tips, the real tips that I've been dying to share with you guys. So the first is scholarships. I know you're going to be telling me like, you know, scholarships, my grades aren't good. How am I going to qualify? Okay, hear me out. All right, so here's the little thing that when, when I talk about scholarships, there are a ton and I mean a ton of different kinds of scholarships. So let me get, kind of talk about the little, the lesser known scholarships, the little, you know, unknown nuggets, seeds of opportunity, the little nuggets that people kind of miss out. And then you tell me if it's feasible for your situation, okay? All right, so the first is company 
scholarship. So there are a lot of companies out there that are looking for talents. So if you are in a university degree and you are decent, you don't even have to be fantastic, you are decent, a lot of companies are willing to help you out. In return, you would be bonded to the company for a couple of years. So a bond is a good or a bad thing depending on the situation. So here's what I mean. If you are stuck to your favorite company, isn't that a fantastic thing, right? So that essentially secures you a job and at the same time, the company pays for your university education. So the bond typically lasts for about five years. Some could be longer. So there's a huge list of companies. So here's an example of uh, the Singapore companies that are providing like bonded scholarships to Singaporeans. So there's DBS banks, there's Keppel, lots and lots and lots of companies. Just look at the list. It just goes on and on and on. So that's the first kind of scholarship or way to pay off your school fees debt for five years of employment. And honestly, I think a lot of people kind of look down on this uh, opportunity. Why? Because they don't want to get stuck into something. But then again, you are stuck paying this debt over a long period of time. So it's kind of like you're stuck to work, right? That's one option that people don't really consider carefully. So if you are you know, just starting out in college and you know what you want, roughly what you want, you might want to consider searching or asking companies if they provide scholarship in exchange for you know, a bond. Another type of scholarship that a lot of people miss out is a religious kind of scholarship. So you'll be surprised, like uh, in Singapore, there is a Muslim scholarship, Buddhist scholarship. I think there's a Christian scholarship as well. So here's a simple example of my school email. I received this uh, Muslim scholarship invitation. So turns out there is many other kinds of scholarship for like different things as well. So uh, religion is one, Apparently, there is also like sports scholarship. If you do one in sports, there's like the, in Singapore, it's the Max Lewis scholarship. And another very big one is the Peter Lim scholarship. You know the billionaire in Singapore, Peter Lim? Yes, he has a foundation that provides sports scholarship to people that do well in sports. So if you happen to do a lot of sports, you're not too fantastic in your grade, you might want to try applying for Peter Lim scholarship. That's like what, a good $3,000 every year if you can qualify. So that's another little known opportunity. Also, here's one of my uh, most favorite scholarships and that is the YPG scholarship. So YPG has a very unique set of criteria. So they use character or leadership as the basis of whether you get the scholarship or not. So grades don't matter, right? So it's all about the leadership in you. And for me, I told them that I started uh, BG Badminton, uh, helped thousands of people around the world play better badminton safely, and they liked my pitch. And that's when I managed to join YPG. They gave me, I think, a thousand or two thousand dollars. And not only that, they gave me access to all the other networks around the world. So one of them is like the entrepreneur of the year in the, in the, in the States. So it's not just the scholarship, but also the network. Not to mention once you kind of get one scholarship and then you put that in your resume, it kind of builds your profile. Like you are a lot more capable or people kind of trust you with one scholarship. So chances are this guy is pretty good, even though they don't know that this scholarship is really based on criteria that's out of uh, pure academic results. So it's a fantastic thing to keep trying to apply to more scholarship and not to mention that once you start applying to different scholarship, you know, you get the hang of, or you see a recurring pattern. A lot of scholarship application forms would ask very similar things. So initially, you would have to spend a lot of time to apply for one scholarship uh, form, but as you apply, you start to notice a recurring pattern. For example, one of the standard questions that they ask is, why do you think you are deserving of a scholarship? Are you going to say different reasons every time you apply for different scholarships? Maybe. But generally, if you find one method that works or one answer that works, 
you copy, you paste, you modify a little bit to their requirements and there you have it. So it becomes a lot more efficient as you apply for more scholarship. Apart from the traditional scholarship, there's another kind of scholarship that is not often applied or utilized, fully utilized, and that is the foundation. So there are a lot of uh, philanthropists, philanthropists in the world and they want to help people like us get by they want to stop the 1.5 or support the 1.5 trillion dollar student debt you know to prevent it from becoming worse so these philanthropies philanthropies are everywhere and the problem is they they do not always reach out to the school so you need to know how you can access this uh, people this foundation and apply and you'll be surprised like when I find like different uh, philanthropies uh, found different foundations and ask my friends have you applied the general answer that I hear from my peers they think that they don't stand a chance it's busy it's during you know midterm or close to exams they didn't bother and I'm like wow fantastic more chance for me you know it's like I get more tickets and that is really the truth that I see if you can ask your friends like not every foundation uh, is kind of sent to your school so a lot of them kind of need to proactively check the dates of the application dates and apply and lo and behold if you just get one hey that's a boost to your resume plus a lot of cash like three five ten thousand dollars a year so all you need is one and you get a lot of money man so keep trying to apply there's a lot of them around like so if you don't try you won't know the results so for me i was very blessed to be awarded scholarship by peter lee orthodontics as well as daisy fay foundation so very lucky and there was one more that I was about to get it's this from this car company but i didn't manage to i didn't want to get bonded to them so i didn't try for that so now the next big hack is the bursaries the grants so there are a lot of grants in most countries i'm not sure about all countries but in singapore there are a lot a lot of grants and again not all of them is give it's handed to you on a silver platter so you just need to find them and for bursary or grants the generally the requirements is for your family to be or to have uh, to be under a certain level of income per capita so if your family don't earn a certain level of income the chances of you getting this kind of grants is very high and some of the grants that i get is crazy like for example uh you know this insurance firm prudential they gave me a grant for eleven thousand dollars bond free that's right eleven thousand dollars so thank you prudential if you're listening to this uh i'm very thankful and there are such grants out there you just need to find them find them track them kill them or apply for them and you get the gist of it so it's an unutilized opportunity and it's the same thing people don't know don't bother they don't try and if you don't try you won't get so a lot of bursaries out there even the religious uh, scholarships they often also have the bursary uh, comp uh, component that you can apply for oops my lights just went out <laughs> okay well we're gonna get romantic tonight uh, and last but not least my favorite favorite hack is I call this the interest rate arbitrage well it's well because okay here's the thing like i had a very good student loan term in which i don't actually have to pay any interest throughout uh, the years that i'm actually studying i'm i only accrue interest after i graduate so that means that if i have like money should i pay off my student debt immediately well logically yes but in this case because i'm not getting any interest charges it's much better i take the money put it in a high interest uh, bearing account that makes me 2%, 2.5% a year. And at the end, when I graduate, pay off the capital that I set aside plus the additional interest that I got from a savings account. So a lot of you young buffetologists over here, you're going to tell me that, hey, you know what? I think I can get a much better yield than just a savings account. I'm going to invest in the STI stock market, pick individual stocks. Trust me, brother or sister and sister, don't do that. It's a very, very, very risky proposition. You could potentially risk losing all the money you set aside in a bad cycle. And it's always better to stay safe 
and have a little bit lesser money, then be forced to exit your position at a very poor timing. So unless you have a lot of spare money that you can put aside for, for investing, don't try to achieve that huge you know, savings or returns. Just stick with something very safe like your government bonds or just a high savings account, a high, sa a high interest rate savings account. Put it there, keep it safe, and just that alone, when I was entering university, I managed to save up about $30,000 because pretty much my diploma in secondary school was completely free uh, because of the scholarship and bursaries. So I only had a university to worry for, plus I was working uh, odd jobs as well as a formal, as a former national athlete. I got like about $30,000 saved up, so that money Plus, I also got an uh, additional loan from the school. They call this the, what do you call that? The living expenses loan. So I, I basically get money for living expenses. And of course, I worked while I was in school. So I didn't really need that money. All this money, 30,000 plus the living expenses was put in a savings account that generated like 2% interest rate every year. So basically, by the time I graduate, that, that's like, or by the time I graduate in a couple of months time, that's almost a good $2,500 in free money, basically. So just by arbitraging the interest rates, I was able to uh, pay down my student loans a lot quicker. Of course, this is a lesser known technique. People don't employ this strategy and it requires you to be a lot more disciplined. But if you're disciplined and you're able to kind of manage your money, look at the terms that you get, you basically get free money. All right, so just by employing this strategy, I'm able to get over like $100,000 in scholarship and over $30,000 in bursary and grants. And just from the interest arbitrage, it's like $2.5 to $3,000 and extra money that I used to pay off my student debt a lot quicker. So if you're young and you're worried about your education loans fees, don't worry, you are not alone. There are a lot of people out there that can help you. You just got to find them and apply. And of course, you need to try to study very, very hard. And I wish you all the best. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. I hope this video is helpful. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel because I need all the help I can get. Honestly, I'm not even like a thousand subscriber large. So thank you for watching. And if you haven't already, do check out my other videos in my channel and I'll see you next time. Ciao! To be honest, when I think back, it's kind of funny how I even found out or learned about this apply for all bursary and scholarship technique. It was during the army that I was trying to learn uh, how to do well in university. So I was reading books on how to do well. Yeah, I'm a nerd like that, right? So, and turns out the tip was, one of the tip was to apply for all the scholarships because it builds your resume. Surprising? Yeah, it works. That's the best part.